Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be the last installment of my Disney College Program Tips and Tricks for the Application Process series. The first two are already posted to my channel. The first one is all about the application itself and the second one is all about the WBI or web-based interview and this one is going to be about the last phase of the application process which is the phone interview. So this is not going to be in really any type of order. I'm just going to kind of go through the notes that I have on my phone. I was putting things down as I thought of them, so this will probably be all over the place. But these are my best tips and tricks for how you can successfully pass your phone interview. So the very first thing that I want to mention will be before the phone interview even starts. And this is going to be in regards to actually scheduling your time for when you will take your phone interview. So when you pass your WBI, you will find out right away whether or not you pass. So if you do pass, you will eventually get an email that says pretty much you will be moving on to the next phase, which is the phone interview, and it will give you a link to go and set up the time for when your interview will actually take place. So when you're doing this and picking out your time, I recommend putting aside at least, at least an hour. So let's just say you schedule your time for 11 o'clock. Then they can call you anywhere from 15 minutes before your scheduled time up until 15 minutes after your scheduled time. So if you schedule your time for 11, they can call you anywhere from 1045 until 1115. I've taken the phone interview twice and both times they called me around 10 minutes after my scheduled time, but they have been known to call around 15 minutes early as well. So you wanna make sure that you allot 15 minutes before the scheduled time as well as 15 minutes after. Then after that, the interview can take around 30 minutes. It can take, I would say up to 30 minutes. The first time I took the phone interview, my interview lasted for 35 minutes, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then the second time that I took the phone interview, which is actually the time I was accepted, I was on the interview for around 15 minutes. It was between 15 to 20 minutes. I wanna say it was actually around like 17 minutes. I have the whole thing um, recorded just for my own purposes to kind of look back and see anything I can improve upon. And I wanna say it was around 17 minutes. So you do wanna make sure that you do have an hour allotted away specifically for the interview and that way you will not be interrupted or anything like that. I strongly recommend scheduling the interview during a time where you really know you're not gonna have anything going on. So I really try to like schedule the interview when I know I don't even have like work that day or I don't have any responsibilities or obligations for that day, mainly because you don't know how long the interview is gonna last, you really don't know, and it's just better off being safe than sorry. When I took my last phone interview, I was working two jobs and it was really hard for me to know a time of when I would actually be able to take it. So I scheduled it for like 8.30 at night, which is like, you know, a late interview, but I knew that I wasn't gonna have anything going on. So I knew I got off of work at like six. So I knew that I had plenty of time to get home, get myself prepared and still have enough time set away for the interview itself. Also, when you're picking your day, you wanna make sure that whatever day you pick, you will be able to be somewhere where it's gonna be quiet, where you're not gonna have any distractions, and you also wanna make sure that you are not going to be driving. If the interviewer suspects that you are driving, they will ask you to reschedule, which just doesn't look good, and they let you know all of this information when you get that email, but it's just something good to keep in mind. They will ask you to reschedule if they think you're driving. And you also don't really want any loud noise or distractions going on in the background. You want to make sure you're going to be in a place where it's quiet and where you can really focus on the interview. So my biggest tip for the phone interview is to prepare. You can go online and look up any type of possible Disney College program phone interview questions you know, a list. Like they will have so many lists of those online. That's what I did both times I took my phone interview. I wanted to kind of know which type of questions they would be asking me. And it's just good to be familiar with what possibilities they might throw at you with, you know, their questions. That way you're not kind of thrown off guard. I do recommend doing that, but I do not recommend that you rehearse or memorize answers. So, if you have questions that you think they might ask you, 
I recommend putting down key points that you can kind of touch base on and having a notebook in front of you with those key points written down that you want to make sure you bring up, but not rehearsing or memorizing an answer. That's just gonna make you sound robotic. It's not going to make it sound very natural or genuine, and that doesn't come across very well. So write down key points that you know for sure you wanna bring up, but don't sound rehearsed. For instance, I was in uh, Beauty and the Beast when I was in high school, and there was a time where I got thrown in to cover LeFou, <laughs> but our LeFou that we had actually fell during one of the scenes a little too hard and they thought he broke his arm so he had to be rushed to the hospital and my director asked me to step in and cover the lines. I knew for sure when I was taking my phone interview that I wanted to bring that up because one of my top roles was attractions and with attractions sometimes you have to do spiels and that shows that I was good with improv, I was good with picking up if something went wrong, I could easily come up with lines, all of that kind of stuff. So kind of went hand in hand. So you do want to make sure you're writing down key points that you know for sure you want to bring up. But like I said, don't sound, you know, rehearse, don't memorize your answers. So when the recruiter calls, the very first thing that you're going to notice is that they're going to call you from a blocked or unknown number. So it's not going to be like an actual phone number, it will be blocked. And I wanted to point that out because if you're anything like me, I always tend to ignore any type of blocked number because I always think it's kind of just like a telemarketer or like some type of scam. Um, I even do that with numbers I don't know. I like never answer the phone. So, you know, just keep that in mind. They will be calling you from a blocked number. If you see that anytime within that half hour range of when they could possibly call, pick it up because it is most likely them. <laughs> when they do call, you're going to want to answer the phone by saying, Hi, this is Michelle speaking. You don't want to just say hello or hi. It doesn't come across very professional. You want to answer the phone with saying, hello, this is your name speaking. It just looks a little bit more professional. It looks like you're ready to go and it just comes across well. Throughout the interview, I really recommend saying ma'am or sir. And also in the beginning of the interview, they will say, Hi, Michelle, this is Mark calling from the Disney College Program recruiting team for your phone interview. As soon as they mention their name, I recommend writing down their name so that you don't forget. I recommend doing this because throughout the interview, I think it's a, always a good idea to use their name. Disney is huge on knowing names, and so it's really just a good idea for you to use the interviewer's name throughout the interview so that it shows you paid attention, you learned what their name was, and you know how to use it thoroughly in a conversation. It just looks really good, and it's something that Disney is really kind of adamant on, so they want to see their future cast members doing that as well. The first part of the interview is pretty much just going to be going over some of your basic information. They're going to ask if you have any tattoos or piercings that you can see outside of a one-piece bathing suit. Be honest, if you're not, they will find out. Tattoos are something that Disney does not allow to be shown. So you do want to mention if you do have any tattoos, especially in an, a region like your arms or on your wrist or even like on your legs anywhere, if you have something somewhere that will be easily shown, then you want to be honest with them and tell them that it's there. But you want to make sure that you mention that you are willing to cover it as well as you know how to cover it. So I have a tattoo on my foot. And every time that question comes up, I always say, yes, I have one tattoo on my foot. I tell them exactly what the tattoo is and how big the tattoo is because they will ask you that if you don't tell them. And then I say, but I am very willing to cover it up and I also know some ways to cover it up. I can cover it up with makeup as well as band-aids if that's something that's okay and I am willing to do that. You just want to put it out on the table so that they know, okay, yeah, you have tattoos, but you're okay with maintaining their look. They will also talk to you about the Disney look, which is pretty much no tattoos, no multiple piercings, um, no like crazy colored hair. If you're in something like food and beverage, you can't have any nail polish. They're gonna ask you if you're familiar with that. Become familiar with it. It's just a good way to show them that you are prepared. And when they ask you if you're familiar with it, that way you can say, yes, I am familiar with it and I'm willing to maintain it. That's the biggest thing that they want to know that you're going to maintain their look. 
After that, they're gonna go through some other information with you. They're gonna verify your school, what you're studying, what year you're in, all of that information. And then they're going to start asking you other questions about the program. So they might also ask you if you are an international student. So, you know, if you're not, you're gonna wanna say no. They're just gonna ask you a bunch of kind of random questions that are all about you. So there's not really much to say there besides the fact that you just wanna be honest with all of your answers and make sure, like I said, if they ask you about ta tattoos, which they will, and if you do have tattoos, make sure you mention that you are willing to cover them. And as far as the Disney look, I recommend becoming familiar with that. I think that when they're asking you questions, you just really wanna sound confident in your answers. You wanna show them that you would be the best cast member for the program. So you really just wanna make sure that you're sounding confident in all of your answers, even if you aren't really sure of how to answer something, just be confident in whatever answer you do give and always tie it back to how your experiences would allow you to be successful in the program and also why you want to do the program. So my first phone interview, I actually did not get asked why I wanted to do the program, which I thought was crazy because they always tell you when you look up these types of videos or blog posts or whatever that they're gonna ask you, why do you wanna do the program? I actually did not get asked that question my first time and the second time I did, but I always, always, always highly recommend having an answer ready for that. You want to know why you want to do the program. If you want to do the Disney college program that bad, then you should really know why you want to do it. And don't be shocked if they ask you that question. You want to know why you want to do it and you want to be able to sell yourself and tell them a very good and confident sounding answer on why you want to do the program and why you would be a great cast member. You also don't wanna just look at it as why you wanna do the program. You should look at it as why Disney should hire you. And also, I think the first time I did the phone interview, I talked way too much about how much I love Disney and not how the program would actually be a good fit for me. So I recommend finding a happy medium. Yes, you want to talk about how much you love Disney, how much it's your dream to work there, how well you know you would fit in, but also talk about it from a professional stance as well. Tell them why you think that you would be a good cast member. Tell them how it will help you professionally, how it will help you in your future career, how it's gonna help you academically with what you're studying now in school, how your past job experiences would play a part in you being a successful cast member and how that will take you on the journey of where you want your future career to go. So you wanna talk about your love for Disney, but also how it actually is gonna help you in the future. Sorry, Cody had to join us because um, he would not stop barking in the background. So, you know, here he is. <laughs> All right, so another tip that I wanna give for when you're actually answering the questions is to smile through the phone. Now, I know that this may sound crazy, but you can actually hear a smile through the phone. And this is just gonna make you sound so much more naturally excited without an answer like, why do you wanna do the program? I wanna do the program because I love Disney. Like that doesn't sound very natural. But if you answer it like this and you're not smiling, it's not gonna sound very excited. It's gonna come across very monotone and it's just not gonna sound good. So you wanna smile, you wanna show excitement, you don't wanna do it in a very dramatic <laughs> or obnoxious way, but you just want to smile, let your excitement for actually wanting to do the program shine through, let the recruiters see how excited you are to get accepted into the program. And the best way to do that is to just smile and let your true excitement shine through. It'll come across very natural and it will come across to the recruiters, believe me. So I definitely recommend coming up with around three to five of your top roles that you wanna do. This will let them know that you are familiar with all of the roles and what each role actually entails. And it will also just give you a chance to talk about what your actual top roles are. So I always recommend kind of putting interest in more than just like one or two roles in your application. But of course, you might not have the same level of interest in one thing as you do with another. So if you do have a top like three roles that you know for sure you would love to do, then mention that. They can consider you for any role that you put even the slightest interest in on your application, but this does give you the opportunity to tell a live human being about what your top roles actually are. 
So yes, they can consider you for any of the roles that you put interest in, but you never know if they hear you talk about how much you want to do something, then maybe they will consider you highly for that. Also, when doing this, come up with any experiences that you've had in the past or any times during any of the jobs that you've had that would relate to your top roles. Just really sell yourself on doing those roles. This is the chance that you have to do it. Also kind of going along with that, they might ask you what your top three roles are. So you don't want to kind of be thrown off guard if you do get asked that question. So it's really just always good to come up with your top roles. At the end of the interview, they're going to ask if you have any questions that you would like to ask them. Yes, you always want to have at least one or two questions prepared to ask the recruiter at the end of the interview. You never want to just say no and hang up and end the interview there. Having at least one or two questions prepared just shows that you're really interested in learning more and that you would like to be knowledgeable about the program and it just shows a more Hot, like a higher interest in the program, if that makes sense. So I always recommend having at least one or two questions ready to go. And there's a lot of videos or blog posts that kind of go into what good questions would be. But ask questions that you would actually really want to know. If you want to know what a day to day look would be into your top role, then ask that question. Or if you want to know any type of more information on living situations than ask. There's no right or wrong answer on what type of questions to ask, but I definitely recommend coming up with at least one or two questions to ask your recruiter. So that is pretty much it. These are all of my top tips and tricks for the phone interview for the Disney College program. Honestly, I think that if you follow these tips, then you have your best chance of getting accepted into the program. Once again, to reiterate, be prepared, but don't rehearse or memorize your answers. Come up with a list of possible questions that you might be asked. Write down key points that you know for sure you want to talk about. Come up with around three to five of your top roles. Smile through the phone. Believe me, it comes through. Have a notepad and pen ready to go to take notes throughout the interview. Write down your interviewer's name and use it throughout the interview. And occasionally use sir or ma'am as well and come up with some questions to ask your recruiter at the end of the interview. If you do this and sound confident as well as professional and show your love of Disney as well as how this program will help you professionally, then I believe that you will have your best shot of getting accepted into the program. Getting accepted is an absolutely incredible feeling. I remember it like it was yesterday when I got accepted into the program. I was absolutely shocked. I was crying. I was telling everybody. Getting accepted is just one of those memorable once in a lifetime type of experiences and I wish that everyone could feel that same excitement and joy. It is absolutely incredible and I honestly think that by following these tips and tricks you probably have a pretty good chance of getting accepted into the program. So I really hope that this video and all of my tips and tricks throughout the process helped you in any sort of way. If it did, please let me know if you got anything from this video that you think might help you or might have helped you if you already used it. Please let me know. I would love to hear about your stories. Also, if you're applying, please let me know. I would love to Wish you luck and to keep you in my thoughts while you're going through the process. I know it's a scary process, it's a long process, but it's worth it in the end. Also, please keep in mind that if you do not get accepted, just try again. It took me four times before I finally got accepted and yeah, it was starting to get really frustrating, but believe me, when you finally get that acceptance email, nothing feels better than that. So just keep your hopes up high. Believe me, nothing worth having comes easy and this is no difference. So just try your best, be yourself, show the recruiters how good you would be at being a cast member. And if you have any other questions, please just feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I'm always willing to help anyone out in any other way that they might need. If I missed anything that you have an additional question about, just let me know because honestly, I absolutely love helping in any way that I possibly can. And I want to see everyone get accepted. So <laughs> if you have any other questions, let me know. I'd love to answer them. And I hope that I will see you all on my next video. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.